Welcome back to another video for N2 Electrical Trade Theory. Please remember to hit that like button and to share these videos. Now in this lesson, we'll be taking a look at measuring instruments, which is the same topic we will cover in N2 Industrial Electronics. A measuring instrument is a device that can be used to determine the value or magnitude of an unknown quantity or variable. In this example, we have a moving coil instrument with two permanent magnets with a north pole and a south pole. Under normal conditions, lines of flux are running from north to south. Now, when current passes through the coil, it generates a magnetic field. And this angular force causes the coil to rotate on its axis. Now, the amount of deflection depends on the magnitude or the size of the current flow and the magnetic field. The uh, mechanism used for air damping is a chamber filled with air, and this air pressurization stops the pointer from oscillating, in other words, from jumping around. For mechanical damping, a hairspring is used, which is attached to the pointer, and this causes the pointer to move back to the off position where no current or voltage is being measured. Another form of damping is eddy current damping, also known as electromagnetic damping. And here, an aluminium disc is used to oppose the magnetic field. For a single phase circuit, we'll connect our measuring instruments directly to the load. For a voltmeter, the voltmeter is connected in parallel to the load. An ammeter is connected in series to the load. The watt meter, which measures the amount of energy consumed per hour in kilowatts. There are two coils, the current coil connected in series to the load and the voltage coil connected in parallel to the load. For our moving coil instrument calculation, also known as a galvanometer, a moving coil instrument with an internal resistance of 60 ohms gives a full-scale deflection when 15 milliamps flows through it. Now here, a moving coil instrument can be used to either measure current, which will be represented by an amp meter, or to measure voltage, which is represented by a voltmeter. Now the objective of this question is to determine the value of the shunt resistor and the value of the series resistor. The value of the shunt resistor to be used with the meter so that it will be able to measure current of up to 9 amps. Just remember that the resistance of the meter remains the same in both parts of the question and the resistance of the meter is 60 ohms. The total current being measured ranges from 0 amps to 9 amps and the current flow through the meter is 15 milliamps and to convert milliamps to amps we can divide by 1000 and that gives us 0 0.015 amps. To determine the value of the shunt current, it will be the total current of 9 amps minus the current flow through the meter. Now, the formula provided on the formula sheets is very easy to use. All we have to do is substitute the values. The current flow through the meter is 0 0.015 amps. The resistance of the meter is 60 ohms. And the shunt current is the value, which is the difference between the supply current and the current flow through the meter. Therefore, in order to measure current, the resistor in parallel with the meter is 0 0,1 ohms. The value of the series resistor so that the meter can be used as a voltmeter to measure a voltage up to 80 volts. So here the voltmeter ranges from 0 volts to 80 volts. And what's interesting here is that in order to measure voltage, we want to protect the voltmeter. And the only way to divide voltage is to have a series circuit. Therefore, the total voltage will be the sum of the volt drop across the series resistor and the volt drop across the meter. Now, in order to simplify this question, we can use the formula directly from the formula sheet to determine the value of the series resistor in series with the meter in order to measure voltage will be total voltage divided by the current flow through the meter minus the resistance of the meter. 
the total voltage being measured is 80 volts divided by the current flow through the meter, which is 0 0.015 amps, minus the resistance of the meter, which is 60 ohms. Therefore, to measure voltage, we will place a resistor of 5,273.33 ohms in series with the meter. Finally, this brings us to the digital multimeter. Now, when compared to analog meters, we find that digital multimeters are more accurate. However, they are more sensitive. They can handle negative quantities. The reverse polarity is indicated by minus sign. Overload is indicated on the display. And the precise measurement is indicated on the display. In other words, there's no parallax error when looking at an analog meter from an angle. Thanks for watching this video and uh, thanks for hitting that like button. Bye-bye.